What is going on guys? Welcome, this is Friday Night Live. We're about to taste some beers and I'm super stoked to have one of Southern California's newest breweries here, Radiant Beer Company. These guys are located in Anaheim. Um, they just started putting beer out about a couple weeks ago. So this is like their first batch of beer. And while I tend to uh, not go too quickly into a new brewery, you know, give them time to work things out and figure out the system and dial in the recipes and all that stuff. This is a little bit of a different situation. So Radiant Beer Company is comprised of some pretty experienced people, um, you know, coming from the brewery, coming from Chapman Crafted, Fig Mountain, a lot of different experience in the beer industry uh, that started Radiant and they are coming out of a turnkey brewing operation. So Town Park Brewing Company in Anaheim closed a little while back and these guys took over the space. And so, as you know, when we have a brewery that kind of takes over a turnkey operation, uh, the time it takes to get up and running, get those beers out there, bring them to market uh, is just so much quicker. And so, uh, yeah, that allowed them to really get up to speed and get some really nice looking beers out. Um, so I think one of the things that, you know, I, I noticed right off the bat is branding for Radiant is just dialed in. Some new breweries, they get up and running and they kind of ramp things up and they improve over time. And, you know, they kind of come out a little bit janky and, and kind of clean that up as they get more and more resources. Um, these guys really have things dialed in. So you could just see the experience and the care and everything really buttoned up right from the very beginning, uh, which is another reason why I'm just super stoked to have them um, just a couple weeks into putting beer out. So without further ado, I'm going to start on beer number one. I got four beers here from Radiant Beer Company. And as always, I need you guys to, uh, to be drinking along with me. I can't be drinking alone. So head over to the beer fridge. What have you had your eye on all week? Grab it, crack it open, pour it into a glass, or just say, fuck the glass, drink it straight from the can. Uh, but comment in and let me know what you're drinking. It is Friday after all. Um, I haven't had a beer in a few days and I'm excited to crack open the first beer of the day for me. This is Recommission. This is a lager beer. Um, let's see, what do we got details on the can? 5.2% German style lager. Um, I know they brewed this one true to style as an homage to some of the classics uh, hopped with noble hops. And just look at the can recommission here. Just a beautiful looking beer. I mean, these days it takes a lot to stand out on, on the shelf. And what they've put together here is just really, really, really nice looking. It's remarkable. Really stands out to me. They sent me a glass, so proper glassware. And let's hope I get a good pour. All right, looks like a nice enough pour. And just a really nice looking lager beer here. Brilliant gold, nice carbonation I'm seeing here. You get the nucleation going right up top to a nice, beautiful looking head. Really nice looking beer here. Mm, and the nose is really nice, super clean. Just a touch of sweetness. Mm, a little bit of grassiness too. Really nice nose. Mm. I love a lager and just a kind of straightforward lager because you don't have to dig too deep into it. You put your nose into it, you know that it's good and it's delightful and pleasant. And then you're just like, all right, I'm gonna move on and just drink it. That is really nice. That is really, really nice. Super, super clean. Um, like I said, on the nose, that carries through to the palate as well. And the noble hops here are shining brightly. Um, nice spiciness, just like a little bit of grassiness, a little herbal. And then the malt character is perfect here. Not too sweet. It's like just sweet enough. Gives it that real nice backbone and then just gets right out of the way. Yeah, just really, really clean lager beer. This is delicious. I feel like a lot of times I'm having this beer 
and it gets a little bit too sweet, just a touch too sweet. And you can feel that every sip of the way down the beer. This one just, it stops just short of that to right where it's gonna be super refreshing and you're gonna wanna keep digging into it, you know, sip after sip. And this is one of those beers that goes down really quickly too. Um, like I could, I could see myself crushing something like this in like a minute 15. Oh, Gordon, you're a touch too sweet. All right, what are we drinking here? Let me get through these comments. I missed some good stuff in here. I know that. All right, what's up, Mr. 2020? Caroline, Kiga Graham, Freak Styles, Official Andrew Ruiz, what up? Kiga Graham's drinking 50 Year Storm by Santa Monica Brew Works. Just dropped today. Super nice. Good stuff, man. Owen is Owen. Rob Ray, what's going on? Fofo. Our brew, Botman, howdy. Brewer Brits on, Elation Brewing Rufus Rye. Nice, never heard of Elation, I don't think. Uh, at least it's not coming to my head. What's going on, Botman? Gordon's drinking the pink lemonade from Great Notion. Cool, cool. LB Brew Dude's drinking that six month old pupil. Man, how is it? I haven't had a pupil in a little bit. How's it hold up after six months? I'm sure it's still delicious. All right, Kushal Hall, what's going on, buddy? How are you? Russell's here drinking that Bear Bottle Ultra Lux, one of his favorites in recent memory. Nice, man. I just started seeing Bear Bottle uh, cans hit Los Angeles, and um, I've, re I've heard of them, but I've really, you kind of put me on their radar a little bit, so uh, I've been wanting to pick some of that up. Patus Nalgus just picked up a Pliny from Glendale Tap. Nice. All right, Brewer Brit says they're in Virginia. That was Elation, I think it was. Elation Brewing, nice. Kent Scooney, what's going on? Mr. 2020 drinking that Better Days IPA. McLeod, I don't think I've had that beer actually. I haven't had a McLeod beer in a while. I typically only have them on draft like when I'm there. All right, Pillow Man is drinking Refresh Pilsner from HPB out of the can. You know, sometimes getting a glass is just, it takes too much time. You just gotta go straight for the crack and the sit. In this case, I had to get the glass because it's just, you gotta get that proper glassware, right? Botman 70's drinking that Griffith, J. Griffith, Double RR Diner, coffee, cherry, graham cracker, and vanilla. Woo! Wow, that sounds intense. How is it, man? Let me know. All right, man, kicking things off with the lager here is just the way to go. Uh, what a great lager here. So recommission lager. Hopefully they keep this as a staple in the rotation, or if not, they just continue to build on this because this is a really delightful beer. Um, like I said, brand new brewery out of Anaheim, and these guys got experience under their belts, so they're coming out of the gate swinging real hard. What's up, L Guts Beer Flights? What's up, Howie Burns? LB Brew Dude asks, how have you thought about doing live stream on YouTube? I've thought about it. We'll see, would you watch it? Is it easier to watch there? I feel like there's more people uh, sitting around on Instagram, but um, yeah, I mean, I end up posting these on YouTube as well, so I don't know. I thought about cross streaming it, because with Instagram, you can only use one camera at a time. But with YouTube, like you can do cross streaming to like Facebook and a bunch of places. Um, so yeah, I've thought about it. Let me know if you want me to do that. And maybe I'll expedite the process. So Mr. 2020, Mr. Jeremiah McNulty asked, did you see the space? I did not. Um, they sent these beers up here. I haven't been to see the space. I've heard great things. Um, just, I mean, judging from like the branding on the artwork alone, I feel like their space is gonna be really well done as well. Um, and I think, I love uh, what they're doing with the brand name. So Radiant Beer Company, kind of taking that like, that feeling of radiance of like light shining through. And um, if you look at like their social media, if you like look at these cans, radiance, the light, the, the shininess, that's all kind of like, consistent in their messaging, their branding, their aesthetic. And so I think that their space is gonna have that playing as well, which sounds really cool. 
Um, Radiant Beer Company just joined. What's going on? Just drinking the lager. Super, super good. Really enjoying the lager. I could just drink the lager um, and just not get to the other beers, but I need to move on. Okay, I need to move on. So uh, for anyone just tuning in, just drink recommission lager, German style lager, kind of brewed this true to style and really great noble hop spice, grass herbal um, with just the right amount of um, kind of biscuity, crackery, malt character. Um, super, super good. Really like that. What a great way to start this off. Um, next, we're moving on to a beer style that I really don't ever drink. I can't think of when I last drank it, and that is a wit beer. So this is Blank Slate Wit Beer. And let's see what we got on the can. Wheat beer brewed with citrus, peels, and spices, 5.2%. And I know they noted the spices on the website. Um, special spice blend that incorporates coriander, chamomile, and at least one more secret spice. Okay, you got me intrigued. You got me intrigued on that. Uh, so let's see how this, uh, how this all plays out. And once again, we have a really nice looking can here. Um, you kind of have that like bokeh photography effect. And again, in a, in a universe where cans have a very difficult time standing out on the shelves they've managed to create something that's like beautiful and bright and um really eye-catching but without being over the top something that can be really easily glossed over and especially when you have all these cans together i'll just put two of them together like the branding plays through so if if they have like multiple skews in the coolers at some of the uh bottle shops and stuff they're gonna have uh, something, a section that really stands out. So the aesthetic is really consistent across and I think that's gonna play out really well in terms of just being eye-catching and memorable. All right, wit beer, let's try it. All right, so we have a really bright pale yellow Like slightly murky, a little translucent. We got a fizzy head right on top. Guess the spice, that's the challenge, man. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. <laughs> really nice nose. I mean, for what this beer is supposed to be, I think that wit beers can sometimes be like a little cloying with like clove and and that kind of cinnamony and uh, like peppery spice on the nose. And this one really has things dialed in. It's really bright and fresh. Beard boobs, you got a fizzy head. Um, yeah, it's just a really like bright and fresh smell. It doesn't smell like um, artificial orange. It doesn't have that like really overwhelming potpourri kind of thing going on, like flour and clove and spice. Yeah, really nice, not over the top, just fresh, bright, good stuff. And that really plays through on the palate as well. It's not kind of overwhelming with, um, with a lot of like big flavor. There's some cohesiveness here. It's, you know, it's lemon, it's herbal, it's spicy. It's got all those things, you know, it's got, um, the orange peel definitely playing through here, but not in a way that's like bitter orange peel. Cause like when I think orange peel, a lot of times I'm thinking in an IPA when you get that like harshness, that bitterness, um, this is just fresh. It's delightful, really, really well balanced. and. Again, I say balance all the time, every single week on this thing, uh, but balance is legit right here. Just really well done. Not a wit beer guy. I can't say that I'd be um, purchasing a four pack of this or reaching for another one of these, but um, this is a this holds a place in their lineup for uh, the type of person that could get into this. It's really, really light. It's really, really bright. 
and it's it's a nice delightful treat I think on a nice sunny day this would go really really perfectly Botman saying smogs from LA with love is really nice too nice yeah I haven't tried that one beers and boobs likes wit beer show the can here's the can here you go it's called blank slate Wheat beer, brewed with citrus peels and spices. I think it's a chamomile and coriander and some secret spice. So yeah, it's just really nice beer. I like it a lot. All right, so moving on from Blank Slate, we're gonna move into beer number three. This tasting is just rolling right along here. And I was kind of relieved to look at this lineup and see that we only have four beers this week and the highest ABV is 7.2. So coming off of last week where there was multiple doubles, there's a triple, there's a quadruple, um, it, was, uh, it was a challenge to say the least. Um, this is nice, this is pleasant. And so far these first two beers, just clean, straightforward, refreshing. Uh, really well balanced, really well executed beers, incredibly drinkable, um, really just kind of the type of beer that you can just dive into over and over and just with ease drink that beer down. All right, so we did the non-IPAs. Now we're moving in to the IPAs. It's all That's what it's all about, right? It's 2021, IPA is king. And there's one specific type of IPA that is dominating the conversation these days. It's a hazy. It's a hazy. All right, this one is becoming more real. 6.6% hazy IPA. Um, I have hops here, ch -ch -ch. citra, mosaic, and cashmere. So <laughs> I know for some people, they won't even touch a single hazy these days. Like everyone's just like double dry hop, double hazy or bust. Uh, for me, I embrace the single hazy. So uh, yeah, let's uh, give that can one more look. Just a beautiful, radiant, shining, colorful beer. And I like how the beers just like really kind of go in well with the background too. Let's crack this open. All right, on the pour, we have a, a very similar color to the wit beer, but with um, a bit more turbidity. Nice glowing uh, kind of pale orange. Really bright looking too. And the head's, a, the, the foam on top is a little silky. You know, it's not like foamy and frothy. It's like, it's a little silky on there. Coating the sides of the glass. It's nice. Ooh, I like this nose, wow. Like bright tangerine, cantaloupe, honeydew. Mmm, it's fruity, but like not in like the same old tropical fruit salad that you get off 90% of hazy IPAs these days. Mmm, really bright lemon on it too. Mmm, that's really nice. Mmm. Yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to like, you know, like really juicy, ripe cantaloupe. Um, like the type that's like sweet. It's really nice, really nice nose. Mmm, delish, delish. All right, I gotta drink it. I gotta know what it tastes like. All right, the aroma is like in one world and then the flavor is in a complete other world. Um, definitely sweeter on the nose. On the taste, the sweetness is really dialed down. There's a little bit of bitterness on it, um, a little bit of grassiness. I'd say just a hint of dankness, like it's like a little bit more balanced um, on, on the palate here.
Now I'm getting a little bit of grapefruit, lemon, orange. You get that cantaloupe just a little bit, um, but it's definitely not overpowering. And then there's a nice bright grassiness to it too. This is interesting because this isn't, uh, this isn't like a lot of the hazies that I have. It's also a little bit lighter on the body. Um, and I think we see that in single IPAs. We saw that in the El Segundo uh, hazy last week that you're not chewing on this beer. This isn't a thick, you know, smoothie type of uh, chunky hazy IPA. Um, it's got a nice light body, which keeps the beer drinking really bright and really fast. Uh, it kind of goes down. It's not lingering on your palate. Um, it kind of clears away really quickly to get you right back into the beer. Um, yeah, this is really cool. I like this beer. I kind of like um, the aroma better than the taste a little bit. But the taste is great because, you know, if you've watched me talk about Hazy IPA, you know that balance is what I'm looking for, that I want something that has a little bit more bitterness to kind of balance out that fruity sweetness. And um, this has that. And yeah, yeah, it's coming, man. Pour number two. Yeah, I need to have a little bit more. This is really nice. Good stuff. This is not going to be enough. If you're a big double dry hop, double hazy, like you're in that big monkish and other half and all that type of stuff, um, this might not be enough for you. Like this might be a warm up, um, but it's balanced, it's subtle, it's, it's just not as big as those beers. Um, it's not as, uh, as, in your face of an experience. And so this might kind of fall short for you. For me, this is wonderful. Especially going from the lager to the wit to this, it's just a wonderful progression that I really like. ABV on this is 6.6, 6.6. So yeah, this is uh, becoming more real, hazy. And I always like to know like the story behind the names. I know these days, like names, naming beers is just so difficult that like sometimes you can't really come up with like a cool story, but um, with how much intention they have in this brand, I'd be interested in hearing like, you know, what does the name of the beer mean to them? Um, how does it play into the consumer experience of the beer? I come from a marketing background, so I'm super nerdy about that kind of stuff. Um, and just the phrase becoming more real that could be in reference to a lot of different things. Uh, maybe even just to the brewery itself, like, Hey, this was an idea a year and a half ago or whatever, or two years ago. And now it's actually happening. Um, yeah, just super cool to see them up and running. I love the idea of, you know, a brewery that, you know, sometimes businesses close, um, and breweries uh, have to transition. And so we see breweries close, new breweries take their space, and then build on the legacy of the brand before it and create it into something all their own. And so I think that's, that's really fun to watch. And we're seeing that happen at certain places in Los Angeles. We've seen that happen in certain places in, um, in Orange County, I think. Green Cheek taking over the old Barley Forge location is like a really cool example of that. Um, so, and even uh, Green Cheek taking over the, uh, their first, the orange location, I think it was Valiant or, I forget what the name of the brewery was that they took over there, but you know, just taking over these other spaces that unfortunately have to close and then being able to come up and, uh, and open up in a much quicker timeline than they would by building out a space from scratch. And um, yeah, I just think that's an interesting story. So becoming more real, hazy IPA 6.6%. What's up AP Creative? Cheers, man, happy Friday. I dig your work, man. Broxton Brew in the house, what's going on? Got some friends over there. Um, we're going to transition into beer number four. This is the final beer of the tasting 
and we're going into my personal current favorite style. It's West Coast IPA. This is Parallel Path. So we're, uh, we got a West Coast here, 7.2%. And uh, in terms of hops, we, this one is led by Simcoe and features mosaic and farm source Motueka from New Zealand. Awesome stuff. Sorry, I missed some stuff here. Uh, yeah, good stuff here. Broxton, what's going on? Yeah, yeah, best triple IPA I've had. AP Creative, sipping on that BT 2019. Woo, what a night. Radiant, where are you hiding the other two? <laughs> Pablo Escobar joined, what's going on? Burrachos, howdy. All right, parallel path, let's do it. What's up, Lolly Trum? Ooh, I'm liking the color on this already. Just, you know, sometimes right on that initial pour, your heart just smiles at the appearance of the beer. And that's kind of what happened here. Just a nice, brilliant gold, nice and clear, just the way beer should be. Nice little head sitting right on top, West Coast. Nice nose too, not overpowering, not massive, but bright, it's fresh, citrus. A little bit of coconut on this nose too. Hmm. Lime. Little bit of bubble gum, I'm getting on it too. There's like a, it, it, there's a very fresh citrus component to this, which kind of dominates the nose. But then in the background, there's some really nice um, kind of sweeter stuff going on. And that's where I'm getting like the coconut, the bubble gum. Like it's, these aren't massive forward front aromas. These are kind of background. This is a bouquet here. This is uh, a chorus of different aromas coming together um, into a really nice nose. Mm. All right, let's dig into it. Cheers. What's up, VC Tapped? This is delish. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it back. Balance. This beer has incredible balance. Um, up front. I was getting um, a lot more of the citrus and a little touch of like coconut, um, also a little bit of melon too. But then right on the back end, nice solid bitterness propping that up. Um, I didn't get the bitterness up front, which is why I like, I kind of took a couple sips to like figure out where I was going with this because um, some I was experiencing it in real time and that bitterness kind of kicked in at the very end and propped everything up, um, which is nice. I wouldn't call this a overly bitter beer. It finishes out really dry. And it's got one of those like, and I, I've kind of said this about other beers here too. It makes my tongue salivate. Like it's got a really, um, nice kind of like um, olfactory activation where I am getting a lot of kind of juiciness going into my mouth. Like I'm very, I'm very um, eager to dive back into this beer. Really cool. A lot of the time I get that it's on a bigger beer. Um, you know, like a double IPA that has like a lot more um, big upfront hop character. This is a smaller, more balanced West Coast IPA, but it's still giving me the experience of like what a bigger beer can typically do to me. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, this is really, really nice. It's kind of, um, this kind of falls right in line with the other three beers that I had, where the balance is just incredible here. A lot of times you're able to kind of like pick up really quickly um, certain uh, flavor profiles or characteristics that kind of just like shout out right at you. But uh, but this one, the everything is just so well balanced that like you kind of experience it and then you have to work to dissect it, which I think is pretty cool. I think that's like, if I was a brewer, that's what I would want to go for. Like I'd want to make people like just drink it and not be like, oh yeah, this is a fucking coconut bomb. Um, like I want, I want it to go down in a way where it's like, hey, I just really like that beer. Like, why do I like it? Like sometimes I can reverse engineer and like, uh, figure out what flavors or what experience parts of the experience that I really like uh, But sometimes you just can't get there and I think this is one of those beers where it's just like this is just a really nice beer That is incredibly balanced And you can tell like these are these are the first four beers coming out of this brewery and they're so solid I'd say they're even better than solid. They're really really good And it's not because you're sitting there in the chat radiant all right, I was, I've been missing some comments. All right, VC Tab's drinking a common space, nice. Uh, I am drinking the West Coast IPA from Radiant Beer Company in Anaheim. Brand new brewery. Mr. 2020 rolling up the sleeves on this one. You know it, man, I'm getting to work. Broxton shutting out, out the glass, RIP. You know, I, uh, I was holding out hope that like somehow, some way, I don't know. Bluebird would come back in in some fashion. I think the the ending left uh, the door open for a return. But now that I'm seeing R.I.P., I guess I can maybe start having some closure. I got my. I almost wore my Bluebird shirt today too. Pillow Man drinking that Common Space cap. Oh no, he's talking about me. Yeah, Common Space hat, HPB hoodie, L.A. L. Works shirt. Yep. Every brewery, you should see my shoes. I have uh, I have Beechwood shoes on. So Kent Scooney, Radiant's been around. They just they just released their first batch of beer two weeks ago. Um, so yeah, they're brand new. Yeah, I should be wearing the Radiant blankie too. <laughs> What's up, uh, Bad Dad, Hobson Highways, what's going on? Hoppyhead Productions, howdy. All right. I think I'm gonna kill, well, I still have like a third left in that West Coast, but I'm gonna kill this, and then I'm gonna run through the beers that I went through, and I gotta pick a favorite, and this is gonna be difficult. That's a really nice beer. It just doesn't make you think. It's not over the top. Like it's just incredible flavor, incredible aroma, just great balance. Really nice experience from front to back. Um, okay, so we are drinking Radiant Beer Company. Kick things off uh, today with Recommission, their lager beer. Really nice stuff. German style lager, 5.2%. And if you have an idea of which beer I'm gonna choose as my favorite, make sure to comment in. And I'll see if you're right, or I'll prove you wrong. Next up, it is Blank Slate, the Wit Beer. Wheat beer brewed with citrus peels and spices, 5.2%. So um, it doesn't exactly say what kind of lager recommission was. It just says lager beer, German style lager. Um, next up was Becoming More Real, Hazy IPA, beautiful can. So the hazy is 6.6% hopped with citra, mosaic, and cashmere. And then last but not least, Parallel Path, West Coast IPA, 7.2%. And um, as always, I have to choose which one's my favorite. This one is pretty difficult. It's actually, this one might be one of the more difficult 
um, choices that I've had to do on the Friday Night Lives. Um, and it's the beer that you guys are talking about. Botman's got it right on the money. Uh, Recommission is the beer that I uh, would totally buy a uh, 76 pack of and drink for the rest of the spring. Uh, this is a great beer. And even though it's like not perfect for the weather, like it's like rainy and cloudy outside, um, this is great. This kind of like, I was drinking a lot of lager beer during the Oktoberfest season, obviously. And um, I wish this was around then because this, I mean, those beers tend to be a little bit sweeter. And so I really like the uh, the malt character on this beer, the balance on this beer, just everything that, that this beer brought to the table was incredibly appealing. Really, really good. All right, guys. So uh, that does it for this episode. Uh, four beers, all under seven and a half percent. Wow, I am ending this one so much more differently than I ended last week's uh, assault to my palate and to my sobriety. Thanks so much to Radiant for sending some beers. Super stoked to have gotten my hands on them. Uh, can't wait for what's to come. Uh, if this is an indication of where you guys are going, I am 100% here for it. And for anyone tuning in that hasn't given them a try, um, their beers just hit LA today or yesterday. Um, yesterday, I think. So I know um, near me, Valley Beverage Company got some of those beers. And uh, yeah, those... Uh, those Radiant beers are in Los Angeles. So look out for them. And uh, we can't wait to come down to Anaheim and check out the tap room because I know it's going to be pretty fucking cool. Um, so yeah, thanks so much for tuning in, guys. I'm going to get out of here. We'll see you guys next Friday. What should I taste next week? I don't know. I got to dig into the fridge. Peace out. <laughs>